the fed up flight attendant turned folk hero. Steven Slater and his take this job and shove it move have become infamous. But what happens to him now? He has criminal charges to deal with. He'll probably have to update his resume and who knows, maybe he'll even need an agent. We're going to talk to his ex-wife in a moment, but first, here's Andrea Canning with the latest. A little bit. One more. One. Steven Slater's days of serving pretzels to passengers are likely over, but his 15 minutes of fame are just beginning. It's so encouraging and so special, and there's some really great people out there, and I'm getting a glimpse of that. It's a surprise because obviously I have been away for a little while. From talk shows, you could call him the biggest reality star in the country right now. To late night. Anybody out there looking for a job? There is an opening for a flight attendant at JetBlue. That's right. <laughs> I'm Jimmy. I'll be your angry flight attendant. This evening. Hi, Steven Slater has become a household name overnight. His partner begging for some peace and quiet. If you would just mind to just respect our privacy. The flight attendant's meltdown has made him an internet sensation. From his admission to NewYorkTimes.com that he always dreamed of using the shoot. Oh, we thought, thought about it for 20 years. We thought about it, but <laughs> you never think you're going to do it. <laughs> to a Facebook fan page with over 150,000 members and climbing. There are even ballads on YouTube. Steven Slater, JetBlue 1052. Reality TV people are calling. Book publishers are calling, speakers bureaus are calling. Uh, I mean, this guy could easily make mid to high six figures or even low seven figures. But the million dollar question what remains, what will he do next? A lot on my plate. Including pending criminal charges. He potentially faces seven years behind bars. This is serious. What should he do next? He needs to go in his lawyer's office and zip it up. This guy could be in serious legal jeopardy and all the opportunities, all the things floating around him have to get put to the side and he has to focus on his freedom. Freedom that seems to have disappeared, at least for the next 15 minutes. For Good Morning America, I'm Andrea Canning, ABC News, New York. And for more on this, we are now joined by Cynthia Suzanne. Uh, you were married uh, to Steve Slater many years ago. Back many in, years ago, back yes. In the 1990s. <laughs> Thank you for but pointing still that friends. out. <laughs> yes, still friends. So what was that about? Uh, did he discover he was gay after he was married? Um, you know, I, I find it hard to put a gender bias on love. So um, I think when you love a person that, you know, you find that you're attracted to, that's the way it is at that time. And... Um, I, we definitely, you know, split on excellent terms. Uh, no harm, no foul. He's a fantastic human being, and um, I've always adored him. So I and, hope he would say the same about me. <laughs> and you're still friends, but you haven't spoken to him since this since incident. the incident. No, but you did speak to his mom, who had been in touch with him. What did she tell you about what happened? Well, we. It was an unsettling sort of circumstance that I was worried about her. Um, the first phone call was, were you aware of the incident with the JetBlue airplane and Steven? And I right away went to a crash scenario. So I was welcomely relieved to find out that he was okay. And um, we had a very nice talk. Um, I'm certain that Steven is completely consumed in, the, in a media bubble right now. I, I, I'm sure he's doing just fine, but I am aware of the press that I'm getting and the people parked on our lawn and driveway. So she, uh, his mother, described it publicly as a very small meltdown. Did she give you any more insight into what he told her happened? A small meltdown. I think I do think that this has been um, made a very a, a grand situation as a sign of the times. I think that everybody is kind of at a heightened sense of sensitivity because of the frustrations with, you know, rude people everywhere. Stephen is an extraordinarily patient and tolerant person, so there's no doubt in my mind that this passenger had to have been pretty horrific to, to take him to that place. Ever see him snap? Uh, no, no, no. Because we're getting some new reports out, a bit of a backlash going on in New York, uh, Wall Street Journal, Daily News this morning. Other passengers coming forward and suggesting that Stephen was the one who was acting in an odd way over the course of the flight, slamming bins closed, being rude to passengers, and that he actually may have been the instigator. I really find that very difficult to believe. I'm, I would be curious of their intentions if they're, you know, at an opportunistic point or whatnot, because um, Stephen is an absolute consummate flight attendant. He is a professional. He always has been. He's flown for a number of years and was literally born to fly coming from a flying family his father was a pilot his mother flight attendant that's all he ever wanted to do he loved 
the art of flying and serving people. And I think that flight attendants are so often taken advantage of. I mean, these are not waitresses in the sky. They're there to save your life. And, you know, they have these very strict FAA regulations and protocols. And if these are breached, it's it's a big fine for the airlines. It could be all sorts of lawsuits and, and horrible headaches. So Stephen would always, I'm sure, act in the most appropriate manner. And like I said, I think that um, anybody that's coming out now may be countering the fact that he was the professional one up until the point where he just had enough. Um, I'm, I'm, I'd be interested in their intentions. Now, he did tell the New York Times that he'd been fantasizing, thinking about <laughs> uh, the grand exit yeah. for something like 20 years using the shoot. <laughs> Well, I, I can't say that I blame him. I, I don't know if he if he said that or not, but... Uh, he never said it to you. No, no, but, um, sure, you know, it's to me, he, he did. His choice of exiting the plane that way, I think, is a, a very stylish sort of um, exit. But, you know, I don't think that he hurt anybody. I don't think that he... There was no malintent, um, you know, on his part. I think that... This passenger was probably quite lucky that it was a person like Steven Slater because it could have gone either way um, with that sort of brutal behavior. Um, you know, you never know what could have happened. It could have been a physical altercation. He did not take out any kind of, you know, malice on this woman. You mentioned that Steven's been in something of a bubble. Knowing him as well as you know him, is he enjoying this? Is he embarrassed by it? I don't know. I. I can't imagine he'd be embarrassed by it because I don't think that there's anything to be embarrassed about. I think that he um, is probably uh, as baffled as I am by the amount of attention that this is receiving, but he can handle it. He's very classy. He's extraordinarily well-spoken. He's a good, good, good guy. He'll be all right. He had that great moment yesterday, finally, where he talked about when one door closes, another door true. opens. Very What's true. next? Um, I, I've been asked that a lot, and uh, as far as I know, JetBlue hasn't fired him yet. So, um, you know, you never you think know. He wants to stay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He would be the uh, the most famous flight attendant. People would be, you know, standing in line <laughs> to get on the Stephen Slater flight. I'm sure. Um, he's also a brilliant uh, merchandiser in the fashion business. Um, you know, he he started out in fashion. Um, that's where we met. We worked at J.C. Penney's when we were just, you know children. We were, you know, 16 years old. And he uh, had a, a career also at um, Burberry. So he he could go any way like that, I'm sure, too. Well, I'm sure we haven't heard the last from him. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much.